Hey, Joe. Welcome to the SEC. Can you win more than Dan Mullen? Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, giving you our schedule analysis, ranking all the schedules in the Power Five plus the major independents, 70 all the way up to number one. We stop at Mississippi State. We stop at number 28, number seven in the SEC. So that's the seventh most difficult schedule in what is most likely the best conference in college football still? Mississippi State. All right. So the Bulldogs sometimes uh, catch a little flack from me for scheduling very light in the non-conference. And the defense of the Bulldog faithful is that they have to play in the SEC Western Division. No count. You need to schedule good non-conference games. When you especially only play eight in conference and you've got four non-conference games, you should play two solid Power 5 teams. Well, Mississippi State is playing one, and that's an improvement over previous years. Mississippi State against Kansas State. Interesting home-and-home home series coming up the next two years with Mississippi State and Kansas State, the Bulldogs, at K-State September 8th. The other three non-conference games, as usual, are garbage. Stephen F. Austin, outside of the uh, FBS Louisiana, one of the 10 or 15 worst FBS teams, and Louisiana Tech, a decent team. The Bulldogs have played pretty well in recent years, and the Bulldogs and Mississippi State, for some reason, seem to play each other a lot. And so those are the four non-conference games for Mississippi State, far below average if you look across the difficulty of non-conference games for the Power 5 teams. But, of course, it's made up in the SEC Western Division. Alabama, Auburn. LSU, on down the line, Texas A&M to a lesser extent, to a lesser extent, Ole Miss and Arkansas is pretty bad. In the Eastern Division, who does Mississippi State play? Well, the Bulldogs get a break each and every year until Kentucky is good, whenever that will be. They're decent. Kentucky fans don't uh, jump on me for that comment. Kentucky's decent. They're winning seven games. They're going to bowl games the last two years. They're decent, and Mississippi State very much benefits from the scheduling of Kentucky as its rivalry game in the SEC Eastern Division. That's the stupidest, most idiotic scheduling approach I've ever seen. And there's some pretty bad ones out there, but the ACC and the SEC designating rivals cross-division And before you let me know of the cross-division rivalries that need to be kept, and that's why they all need to be kept, I understand. Let's keep the good and beneficial and uh, sacred cross-rivalry games like Alabama and Tennessee, and I have certainly outlined a system that would preserve those and get rid of the others, like Mississippi State and Kentucky. They should not be playing every year. Okay, off my soapbox Now I focus on one of the more interesting and intriguing matchups of the SEC season, and it's Florida and Mississippi State as the Gators and Dan Mullen come to Starkville on September 29th, and that begins a stretch for Mississippi State that is pretty difficult. There is a bye week in there between the four games, but it's Florida and Auburn at home. Then it's after the bye week at LSU and Texas A&M and uh, the LSU games on the road. So Mississippi State, again, Florida, Auburn, LSU, Texas A&M with a bye week is the most difficult stretch for the Bulldogs. And this team looks to be a contender in the SEC Western Division. We'll see what they've got with Joe Moorhead in charge. It's the seventh most difficult schedule in the nation. It's actually seventh in the SEC. It's number 28 in the nation. It belongs to Mississippi State. Please, uh, Follow along the rankings as we go along, and then remember, at the conclusion of this series, I will go team by team through the Power Five and bring you a full preview and prediction on each team right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.